Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about properties of water. So we'll spend just a little bit of time on the first slide thinking about this question. Why is water so important? Why do we care about it so much? And if you think about the sort of evolutionary beginnings of life on Earth, those beginnings happened in the water. Life evolved in the water. And obviously there are still organisms, many organisms that live in an aquatic environment, but even organisms that now live on land, like humans, still depend on water. You can think about our cells being mostly water on the inside, our tissues are bathed in water-based fluids, um, our blood is mostly water. So water is really essential for life. And that's why if you think about um, when scientists are looking for life on other planets, often they search for planets that have water. And that's because water has a number of unique properties that make it essential to life on Earth, at least as we know it. And those properties come down to water's ability to form hydrogen bonds. And these hydrogen bonds ultimately come down to the polarity of a water molecule. And we'll talk about these ideas in more detail on the next uh, few slides. But this ability to form hydrogen bonds um, gives water a number of unique properties. So those properties in brief are cohesion and adhesion, which uh, both refer to water's stickiness to itself and to other things. Water's ability to moderate temperature, so to keep um, temperatures within a relatively narrow range. The low density of ice that allows uh, solid ice to float on liquid water and water's ability to act as a particularly great solvent so it's able to dissolve a lot of things so let's get into this idea of hydrogen bonds and polarity and that's going to allow us to explain all of these other properties that water has uh, before we start hopefully we all know that water's chemical formula is h2o and that means that one molecule of water is going to have one oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms. So two hydrogens, one, one oxygen. And these atoms are held together with covalent bonds. So these black line here, black lines here represent covalent bonds. And in covalent bonds, electrons are shared between the atoms. So oxygen is sharing electrons with this hydrogen and this hydrogen, and that's what's forming these covalent bonds. And these electrons that are being shared have a negative charge. Okay, so we're all set up to think about uh, this sharing of electrons. So in some molecules, uh, two atoms will share electrons and they can share pretty equally. They're, they're good at sharing the electrons and the electrons are sort of existing equidistant between the two atoms. But in other cases, the electrons aren't shared equally. And that's the case with these electrons shared between oxygen and hydrogen in water. So oxygen is gonna have a stronger pull on those electrons than hydrogen does. So the electrons are gonna exist closer to the oxygen atom because it's pulling harder than hydrogen. It's like in a tug of war, if a really strong person is doing a tug of war against a, a small child, the adult is gonna be able to pull harder on the rope. And in the same way, oxygen is pulling harder on those electrons than hydrogen is. Because of this, the electrons are going to be closer to this oxygen atom that's pulling harder on them. And since oxygens are, since electrons are negatively charged, this oxygen is also going to have a partial negative charge. So just a little bit of a negative charge. And the sign here is referring to the fact that it's a partial charge. So oxygen is going to be a little bit negatively charged because of the proximity of these electrons. And conversely, the hydrogens, which uh, are going to be further away from the negatively charged electrons, will have a partial positive charge. So now we've set up a situation within water where one of the uh, atoms, the oxygen, is going to be a little negative and the hydrogens are going to be a little bit positive. The result of this is that water is a polar molecule and there's an uneven distribution of electric charge. And that's in general what a polar molecule is. Um, and if you think about other things that you might be familiar with that are polar, um, you might notice that a battery has a negative and a positive end. Magnets have a negative and a positive end. The North Pole and the South Pole, there is actually charges uh, involved with that as well. So 
in the case of a magnet, you know, that the, the positive and negative ends of a magnet allow magnets to stick together. And water's polarity is going to allow it to do something similar as well. For water, this attractive force between different parts of water molecules are called hydrogen bonds. And you can see it illustrated here. So a couple things to note about hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are always going to be formed between two different water molecules. So they're separate from the bonds within a water molecule that are the result of um, oxygen and hydrogen sharing electrons. Rather, they're going to be the between the oxygen of one water molecule and the hydrogen of another water molecule. So this dotted line here is representing a hydrogen bond. Um, and that's because opposite charges attract the same way they do with magnets. And so this oxygen is partially negatively charged and it's attracted to the partial positive charge on this hydrogen. So you can see that here as well between partial negative oxygen and partial positive hydrogen. Um, so this is this idea of hydrogen bonding is just all about electrical attractions between neighboring water molecules. Um, and another thing to note is that the name is a little bit uh, of a, it's a little misleading. So it's not a bond in the sense that an ionic bond or a covalent bond is uh, really forcefully sticking things together. Hydrogen bonds are pretty weak. So they're broken and formed all of the time based on how water is moving and what it happens to be next to. So these hydrogen bonds, despite the fact that they're called bonds, are pretty easy to break. But water can form a lot of these because of all the partial positive and negative charges that a water molecule has. Okay, so we're going to be getting into uh, all of the other properties of water that I mentioned uh, near the beginning of this video. And one way to remember uh, all of these properties is uh, a new poem that we're going to have practice saying aloud. So the poem goes like this. Sticky wicky, not so hot, floats when frozen, dissolves a lot. And each line of this poem refers to a property of water, and we'll get into what those properties are and how they relate to the lines of this poem uh, right now. So the first line is sticky wicky, and this refers to water's ability uh, to stick to itself, which we call cohesion, and stick to other things, which we call adhesion. So you might think of a co-worker, uh, that means you're both working at the same company. And so cohesion refers to water sticking to other water molecules. And adhesion is when water molecules stick to anything else that's not water. These properties of water, cohesion and ad adhesion, are super important. Uh, one thing, if you think about plants, uh, plants need to get water from down in the roots to the the leaves on the top of the plant. And for something like a tree that's really tall, that's no small feat. Um, so there are internal structures, xylem, that uh, water molecules will stick to through adhesion. And as water molecules are able to travel up the xylem, they'll pull other water molecules with them using cohesion. So cohesion and adhesion allow plants to get water from down in the soil and their roots to the leaves on the top of the plant. Cohesion also gives rise to a uh, sort of a second property uh, that water has a lot of surface tension. So if you've ever seen something floating on the top of water, like these water striders, you might notice that they're sort of like little dents where the water striders legs are touching the water. It's almost like this water has a skin. And that's exactly what surface tension is. It's sort of this uh, skin that is on water because of the water molecules on the surface sticking together so tightly. So this sort of, um, you can think of it as resisting outside forces, this high surface tension. Okay, sticky wicky, uh, the next line is not so hot. And this refers to temperature, water's ability to moderate temperature. Temperature moderation uh, is due to the fact that water has what's called a high specific heat. But basically, it's the idea that it takes a lot of energy to warm up water by just a little bit, a few degrees, and also a lot of energy to cool down water by a few degrees. That In, in that case, you'd be losing energy rather than gaining energy. Um, and one reason this is important is that all of the liquid water on the, plant surf on the planet's surface uh, helps keep temperatures within a range that permits life. It prevents things from getting too hot or too cool. Um, and if you think about going into the water on a hot summer day, oftentimes the water is a lot cooler 
than the area around it. And that's because the water is able to absorb a lot of uh, heat energy without itself getting particularly hot. And in the winter, water can release that stored energy and not get as cold. It also allows for evaporative cooling. So humans sweat, dogs pant, but the idea is the same. Uh, water molecules that have the most energy and are most likely to make the phase change from liquid to gas, uh, once they leave your skin, they're taking that heat with it and that uh, energy is no longer on your skin. So it allows for evaporative cooling. Okay, our uh, third line is sticky wicky not so hot floats when frozen. And this is about the low density of ice. With most other chemicals, as they freeze, they'll, their molecules move closer together. And so the solid form ends up being more dense than the liquid form. And then a solid of that substance would sink in whatever the liquid version of that substance is. With water, it's unique in that uh, frozen solid ice is less dense and therefore floats on liquid water. And that's sort of because in liquid water, all of these hydrogen bonds are being made and broken all the time. And so the water molecules are sort of uh, just more close together and there's all this making and breaking of hydrogen bonds. But when water is frozen, these hydrogen bonds become a lot more stable and the water molecules arrange themselves in such a way that there's sort of an optimum number of hydrogen bonds per water molecule. Every possible hydrogen bond is being made. And the formation for that uh, has water molecules further apart than they are in liquid water where those bonds are being made and broken pretty consistently. So this ability for ice to float means that if a lake gets a layer of ice on top, then that ice can act as an insulating blanket over the rest of the lake and the liquid water can remain below and not get as cold because it has this insulating blanket over the top made of ice and it prevents the entire body of water from freezing. If ice sunk, then it would slowly get more and more frozen as uh, the lake continued to get colder. But since it floats, we get this uh, insulating layer on top. And then our final line of our poem, sticky wicky, not so hot, floats when frozen, dissolves a lot. And this one is all about water's ability to dissolve uh, many, many, many substances that are critical for life. So people refer to water as the universal solvent because it's such, it does such a great job at dissolving things, particularly um, polar things and charged things. So um, within our cells, all of the chemical reactions that are involved with metabolism and all the chemical reactions in our cells are happening with dissolved molecules, dissolved substances. And that's all due to water's ability to keep things um, in solution. And that brings us to our final slide. Um, so as I just said, all of your cells are essentially uh, bags of chemicals dissolved in water. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, are these cells themselves, our tissues, are um, surrounded by fluid called interstitial fluid that's water-based. Similarly, our blood, also water-based. So hopefully uh, we can all agree uh, now that water has all of these properties that are quite unique and essential for life. Thanks everyone, see you later.